G'day YouTube, 1MJ here. Welcome back to my channel. Sorry for the late uh, video, vlog. Uh, Friday night, sort of Saturday morning here in Australia. Had a few things I needed to do, but anyway, here I am. Alright, so not a whole lot of news going on, but Bitcoin is going up. So that's, you know, somewhat good. Looks like the market uh, might be recovering, but, you know, proceed with caution is what I would say. Again, it is the weekend. Traditionally, Bitcoin and the markets sell off a bit over the weekend. It's not every weekend. It's just most weekends. And we don't know exactly where that sell-off will come. Sometimes it comes immediately on the Friday. Other times it's the Saturday or the Sunday. You know, who knows? And look, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it just continues to pump. So we've got to wait and see. But there's an interesting story here. Now, this is uh, Willy Woo. If you don't know Willy Woo... He is a cryptocurrency, he's more a Bitcoin guy, Bitcoin guy than anything, but he's been around for a long time. And if you follow him on Twitter, he's generally got some pretty good stuff. But we've got an article here. A long-term downtrend flips to form bullish support as Willy Woo says Bitcoin's days of tracking traditional markets are numbered. Gee, we can only hope that's true and that Bitcoin can break out on its own and do its own thing. I'm not sure, uh, you know how true that's going to be. We'll have to wait and see, and I'm not saying I don't believe Willy Woo, I'm just saying you know, I'm not sure uh, just how true that's gonna be for some time at least, particularly with uh, you know, big money getting in, you know, the, the big players and things like that. It'll just end up most likely like the regular market, you know, institutional money and things like that. But anyway, let's continue on and read. Bitcoin may soon decouple from traditional assets, says uh, stat statistician, Willy Woo, as a key gold relationship breaks out of a long-term uh, long downtrend. In a tweet on 25th of September, Wu forecast that Bitcoin would act like a successful startup in accruing, uh, yeah, in accruing new interest uh, and going its own way. Adoption, he argued, would follow a classic S-curve pattern, which uh, much in the same way that a startup grows. This would take precedence over investors looking for a hedge against other assets. Bitcoin will decouple from traditional markets soon, but driven by its internal adoption S-curve rather than the changes in perceptions uh, as a hedging instrument by traditional investors. So basically he believes that Bitcoin's going to break away from you know all these other things uh, and be on its own. But we'll have a look at some charts very shortly and there's something interesting going on there. So where are we? Just as Wu predicted a breakaway from Bitcoin's current dependency on factors such as the US dollar index, so the Dixie, another chart highlighted that change may already be afoot. Well, yeah, we'll have to have a look at that. Again, something interesting is happening on the charts right now. Bitcoin's price ratio versus gold in a downtrend since the all-time uh, BTC highs in December 2017 broke, the, uh, broke to the upside when the pair reclaimed 12000 at the end of July. So basically, there's a few different things going on there, but the long, long, uh, the the short story of it all is that he believes it's going to break away, yeah, from other markets and do its own thing. Well, let's have a look at the market. So, the Dow Jones. What have we got today? So the Dow Jones. We've had two green days. So it's broken out. Uh, not broken out, but it's sort of broken this downward trend at the moment with two green days. But again, this day here. Uh, it's not quite over over in the States. So we'll just have to wait and see. And, you know, two green days doesn't mean that all of a sudden everything's fine and dandy because look what we had here. One, two, it even got a little bit higher on a red sell-off, but then just started to fall over again. One, two, fell over again. So we need a little bit more. Uh, no word on stimulus packages yet, but the Dow Jones is up. All right. Uh, S&P 500. Something very similar. All right. Looks like we got two green days. But again, all these markets are looking very same. Dow Jones. S&P 500. Bitcoin. Bitcoin's looking a little bit different. We had a really big green candle and then now we've got a bit of a red candle. Selling off from 10700 coming down to around the $10,600 range. But what we can see is it's forming a bit of a wedge here. Now, this wedge only sort of started really back here, but we can see this trend line. It's still it's still going up, ladies and gentlemen. It's just not rocketing up like it was, 
you know, all the way back here. This was just recovery. This was recovery from the pandemic and it all just pushed back up to, you know, the average trading range along here. And then it shot up a little bit and now it's just rolled over to test a bigger sort of trend line. And if this pattern sort of follows, I guess we're looking at roughly around about the 10th of October and we should know you know, by then, which way it's going to go. Now, this is the greater trend line out here. This is the big one that we broke out of. Then we kind of dip down below, and then we broke out of again, and now we dip down below, and we are above it. And really, $10,544 was... I needed to see a daily close above that. And look, we, we got it right here. So that was good, but now we need to see if this is going to hold. Will this stay above $10,544? So far, so good, but yep, we'll have to wait and see. Now, gold. Gold actually had a green day, and now we can see that change right there. It's just kind of stagnant at the moment, so uh, it's you know wicked up and down, and it doesn't even have a body candle yet, so waiting to see what gold is going to do. But remember the Dixie? Generally, if the Dixie is going down, which is the US dollar, assets are going up. And I've shown that a number of times on other charts. Well, let's have a look what's happening with the Dixie. It's having a green day. So this is unusual. Usually, if the dollar is doing well, assets sell off. But here at the moment, we've got the dollar doing well and assets uh, doing well. But it is uh, sort of, you know, the, the weekend now. So, you know, whether that has any effect on it or not, and we'll have to wait till, you know, Monday to get the, the true indicator, who knows, but that is, that is a little bit unusual. The dollar is doing well, and also assets are doing well. So weekends here, we'll have to wait and see what uh, happens. You know, we can go over here and we can see that in the last 24 hours, there's definitely been some movers. So Cardano, well done, you know, 20% uh, percent move. Chainlink, 12%, so good for Chainlink holders. 0x, Terra, Ren, Zilliqa, uh, and you know a lot of them are getting up to near double-digit moves, so that's, that's pretty good. That's not too bad at all. Most people would be happy with that. And again, we can see that market cap has pushed up a little bit, so 341 billion. You know, we, we still need to get back to that 350, and really, we need to get back to that $400 billion mark that we're at a while ago, because, yeah, well, you know, for me, I'm not sure about yourselves, I'm still in profit overall, but a lot of my altcoin buys over the last probably two or three months or so, uh, they have bled out really bad. They've really hurt. You know, I've got some of them that are near 50% losses at the moment, but I believe in the projects long term, so I'm, I'm not going to sell. I'm, I'm happy to hold. And again, I didn't put a whole lot of money into them, so if they, you know, if they fold and nothing ever happens with them, you know, I've lost a couple of hundred, maybe a couple of thousand dollars between all of them my overall profit uh, for my entire portfolio is still up. So, yeah. What do you do? Sometimes you win some, sometimes you lose some. And, you know, when you have market retraces uh, like we have had over here, this is always going to hurt. And I'm not going to say unfortunately, but I was buying into, you know, some of those alts back in along here. And particularly when we got up into here, I was buying into these alts. So that it's really hurt now that it's, pulled back to here but you know what that's life again my overall profit is still up i'd love to know uh if you're you know whether your profits are up at the moment or down you know any uh, platforms in particular that are doing really well or doing really bad i mean i can tell you now my worst performing uh crypto is unibright oh, i don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to bag Unibright. It is down 46%. Unfortunately, I must have bought it at almost the all-time highs. You know, I made a silly mistake and I had heard about Unibright and done the research. And, you know, unfortunately, the research I'd done had just been all the readings of white papers and things like that. I didn't actually look at the charts because if I had a look at the charts, I wouldn't have bought it. I would have waited for a retrace. But it is, it is what it is. So I'm 46% down, but I'm still up, you know, a couple of hundred percent on some of my DeFi projects. Uh, um, again, I didn't put a whole lot into them, so it's not like they're worth tens of thousands of dollars or anything like that. But I think Aave uh, and Synthetics, both of those were still up around 400% from when I got in 
but yeah, a lot of other projects not doing so well. So let me know again, what of you, what projects of yours are doing well and are still in the green and what projects uh, have you invested in that are doing really bad and are your biggest losers? As I said, for me, uh, Verge actually is one that's hurt me a little bit, but Unibright uh, is the one that's hurt me the most. But you know, you live and you die by the sword as they say. All right, I'm not gonna take up too much more of your time. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that game train and I'll see you next time.